Good evening, YouTube. Hardball Crazy Come Back video. Uh, tonight, I'm doing part two of my Negro League showcase. Uh, probably a total of four parts. The last part was nine uh, playing days cards of uh, former Negro Leaguers. Uh, I failed to mention the first video that I am uh, emphasizing uh, the Negro Leagues from 48 to prior to the same Negro Leagues of baseball reference emphasizes because after 48, uh, the Negro Leagues, the Negro League as a structure, uh, started to uh, crumble, really crumble, and uh, and post post 48 Negro Leaguers, they were on Negro League teams, but uh, became more barnstormy. I don't know what who they played and and who's with what and what years they played, so it gets a little um, murkier. So I just concentrate on the 48 and prior when the Negro Leaguers were a structured uh, league. So um, this is what the players I'm going um, emphasizing on in these showcases. I did I did miss a, a card from the regular post. Uh, playing days of Negro League stars of this gentleman. Uh, I wanted to show up case if I f just remember the card after I uh, uploaded it and video and everything. The Jackie Robinson card came from Tops. I think a Tops debut minor league sets insert set from a couple years ago. It's Jackie Robinson picture of the Montreal Royals. I kind of want to show you that because I don't think that he has much cards. Pictures with the Royals. It was one year in '46. He played for the Montreal Royals. Uh, Dodgers obviously farm team before he debuted with Brooklyn, so I want to showcase that card. And um, onto the autographs and relics. First, the relics. Um, this is a Roy Campanella back card from a upper deck set, Legends of Flatbush. Here is a Don. His teammate Don Newcomb from a Topps Heritage set. I don't know what year it is. It is a Korean War worn uniform memorabilia. I guess it's part of his Korean War uniform. Very unique. I had to have at that when I saw it. The one and only incomparable Willie Mays jersey card. And a uh, bat card of Ewell Suttles. He's a Hall of Famer. He won here with the New York Eagles. Uh, you notice some of these players are, are kind of newer players from, from the uh, earlier video. Because if I have an auto or, or a relic card of them, I'm not really going to try to get a, a regular post playing days card. I'm just trying to get at least one card of each of these guys, at least one. And, and if I have, for like this guy here, if I have an autograph card of him, I'm really worried about getting a different card of him. Early 90s, front row had uh, little 10 card sets of, of Hall of Famers and Legends. And a couple of Negro Leagues included, and each set had an autograph. Here's Ray Dandridge. And here's a set that had Buck Leonard. I have to have this gentleman. If you're a Negro League collector, you have to have this guy. Uh, 1999 Fleer uh, Sports Illustrated autograph insert of the one and only Buck O'Neill. 2001 Fleer Tradition. When Topps was making the uh, Topps What Could Have Been, uh, Fleer did some little thing. They had Stitches in Time, which is like a 20 card insert set and within that 20 cards they had um, autographed inserts of some of the players and here's one of great shortstop Artie Wilson nineteen ninety three all time upper deck all time great set this is a sort of inspiration from the, the Hassan triple folders and this is uh, help with a part of the bat program Baseball assistance team or something like that to help players uh, retired players in need if they need something This is sort of like fundraising thing and here's a cool mini Minoso signed one Just like the triple folders and here is a Monty Irvin You all know about the Dick Perez uh, Hall of Fame uh, Art Cards, you know, postcards, either his uh, uh, Hall of Fame ones or his legendary ones. He has several series. Uh, 
gentleman named Ron Lewis has dated a, a, a 19 in the early mid 90s did a set of um, Negro Leaguers paintings and stuff and postcard size and I have a few of those autographed Wild Bill Wright picture here with the Baltimore Elite Giants catcher Quincy Troop here's the backs of them like they're only numbered to 10,000 of them Quincy Troop was a great catcher uh, the only problem was if for, you think of a Hall of Fame that his his career he played so many different places and, and so his career is kind of fragmented all over the place so he didn't establish himself in one area for a long time to get Hall of Fame consideration but he was a, a great catcher of his time and probably worthy of Hall of Fame and uh, but he doesn't get much headway because of his fragmented career from going place to place to place to place uh, and um, he did play for the Cleveland Indians uh, in his mid-30s or so uh, towards the end of his career and uh, when he did play with the Indians for about a week or so I think uh, he did uh, was a battery mate of pitcher Sam Jones that happened and made American League history as the first all-black battery duo of Quincy Troop Sam Jones with the Cleveland Indians and he was uh, 1945 uh, Negro League World Series champs with the Cleveland Buckeyes. And the star player at the time was Sam Jet Jethro. I think Troop was like a player manager, I think, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but he they were on the same uh, Buckeye championship team. And here's Sam Jet Jethro. You probably know him better as the Boston Braves and uh, Rookie of the Year. And on to the uh, regular Perez Steel Hall of Fame autos. Here's a cool Papa Bell. Picture with Homestead Grays. And to finish off this showcase, Hall of Famer Judy Johnson. So there you have it. That's my autographs for relics. And my next uh, video, I think two videos I'm going to do, is uh, on pl playing day cards of players in the Negro Leagues. And I have pushing about 40 players. So I had my probably have split into two parts unless I do one really long video, but I think I'm just going to do two parters, keep it short and concise and viewer friendly. But uh, thank you for watching. You all have a good night.